good day listeners around the world. It's always a pleasure to come to you with Times and Seasons with Dr. Abu Bako, your humble host, John Ayayi, today. Today is part of the continuation of what we are trying to bring to the world, the understanding of the eight gifts of society. Uh, this is the part two of the economy. The part two of the economy will be dealing more of the prophetic directives that God spoke about or the words that God gave through Dr. Abubako. Let's welcome Dr. Abubako to the studio today. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you once again, viewers, for this wonderful privilege of your time, of your attention. It's always a privilege to be with you and have you actually join me on this journey of learning from the maker of times and seasons, the one who is the reason for every season of your life, of my life, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is the climax of the times in whom all times head up. So I am confident that as we look at the economy together, this second episode under the gate of the economy, possessing the gates of resource management, we're going to really have such a ball of a time. Excellent. So let's go in to our discussion. Sir, why is there so much conspiracy around economies? Let me ask you a very simple question. If you want to undermine any family, you want to undermine any nation, which is the best place to go to? Since God started before making man to put man somewhere by planting a garden, making every provision available for the vision that he will give man. Don't you think if you want people not to achieve what they're supposed to achieve, the best place to go to is to see if you can somehow tighten the area of resources. Because anybody that has enough resources to do what he or she wants to do, you can't stop such a person. Because once the person has a clear vision, and then the resources, the wherewithal, to get to that destination that he sees, the rest is history. It's only when there is shortage, scarcity, lack, insufficiency, inadequacy, disadvantages, that you end up with people not being able to get there. Does God, lack of a better term or expression, slow down or stop resources from flowing to his man? Or his God woman? is not a waster. So if you're not ready, he normally will not continue to release. He that is faithful in little will be trusted with much. If you remember the parable of the talents, or the par parable of the minas or the pounds, depending on which one you... In the case of the parable of the talents, you're talking of Matthew chapter 25. The one that had one that he buried and he did not utilize. God said, take that one from him and add to the person who had five that now had multiplied the thing to be ten. Give that one extra to him in addition to his ten because he's proven faithful. Now I can trust him with more. Same thing with the parable of the minas, where somebody was able to get, you know, 10, they said, give him authority over 10 cities and all that. So the more faithful you are, the more you'll be trusted with. So at the end of the day, God actually believes in giving resources to the ones who are ready to utilize that for the establishment of his kingdom. That's the answer I would give for, do you think God might slow down? If you're not ready, come on, let's face it. You as a father, you have children. Will you give something to your child that would destroy the child instead? Until the child is ready. So that's why even for wills, when people write wills, they say, do not give this to the person until he is of age. Sometimes they say, when he's 18, then he can now step into this. Or when he's 25, different wills have different age brackets. So that's what, what it's all about. There's a statement that you've made before, yeah. maybe many times, that would you give a vehicle to somebody that can drive, to drive you to a destination? 
Can you please say that statement because I want to pick on it. Well, actually, I talked about leadership in general, that every leader is like a driver taking people to a destination. So if it is a business leader, corporate governance, you need to know that you're taking people to a destination, the vision you see. Same thing with a political leader. So I said, it doesn't matter how related, how much you love that person. If he doesn't know how to drive, you don't give it to him. So you don't elect people based on, oh, they're from my village, or it's my father, or it's my mother, because it doesn't matter how much you love your mother. If she doesn't know how to drive, you wouldn't give a bus just full of 25 people, not to talk of a bus full of 30 million in the case of Ghana, 200 million in the case of Nigeria, you know, maybe 300 million in the case of America, 1.4 billion in the case of China, to the person just because you love him. No, you don't want to all die, including the person that you are giving that bus to, to drive. So you don't give a vehicle to somebody who doesn't know how to drive, to drive all of you into a ditch. Can one comfortably say, good self-governance attracts response, uh, resources? Actually, the more disciplined you are in management of resources, so that you are able to reproduce and multiply, the more you attract. In the light of what I said earlier, both Matthew 25 and Luke 16, because when you manage, he who is faithful in little, to him much will be given. That's one. The other one, he said, if you are faithful in another man's you know, thing, with another man's treasure, then you'll be tr trusted with property of your own. Excellent. I, viewers, I don't know if you hear how I hear, but I hear a lot of responsibility. Uh, so that takes me into the prophetic directives for 2020, which okay. is our focus, our main focus for this evening. And in line with the same responsibility, the directives for 2020, God is emphasizing on Isaiah 19, 19 to 25. Nice. And in page, uh, I believe it's 44, or we can even, yeah, page 44 and 45 down. God is saying that it is jubilee, economic jubilee, for the Isaiah 19 nations. Yes. Can you please throw more light? Well, on God when God talks about jubilee for the Isaiah 19 nations, what God is saying in essence is that this is the time for recovery and restoration of lost grounds, of lost opportunities, of lost resources, and all of that. This is the time that, you know, people would have their lands returned to them. This is the time that you have certain things that might have been taken away from you in terms of rights, in terms of markets, and all that being returned to you, opportunities being given you again. And Isaiah 19 nations, basically you're talking of the nations of Africa, the nations of the Arabian Peninsula, Middle East in general, because Israel is the other side. So you have Africa, Syria, and Israel, these three, uh, being a blessing in the earth. So time of Jubilee means that there will be that level of abundance of productivity, creativity, and all of that for the purpose of being the blessing that God said these nations are supposed to be in the entire earth. Why would a boom decade? start with COVID-19? Precisely, usually actually, when you see some of these crises, from the word, the Greek word for crisis, krisis, K-R-I-S-I-S, you're talking of that which separates. So it's like separating the men from the boys. Ooh. And this is the reason why you actually see that each time there is a crisis, some people rise while some people go down. And when you allow those who are 
you know, just out for the new uh, international economic order, the new world order, some of the people, Council on Foreign Relations, you know, Bilderbergs, and, and all of those other people, Trilateral Commission people, you know, they usually want to actually rise in times like this while everybody else is going down. But when the sons of the living God arise, they make a lot of difference. And this is the time for you as a son of the Most High God to arise, because when God arises, all his enemies are scattered. When he arises, his foes flee before him. As smoke that is driven before the wind, we declare them blown away. As wax that melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. Put differently, when you arise according to John chapter 3, verse 8, you would end up being the one that the Bible says, you will be like the wind that blows wherever it wants to go. No one knows where it's coming from, nor where it's going. They only feel you. They don't know where you're going. And so it's everyone that is born of the Spirit. Are you born of the Spirit? This is the time to arise and begin to blow as the wind, and the enemy becomes a smoke, and you determine the direction the enemy goes. And this is the time for you to arise as oh, fire that melts the wax, because according to Psalm 104 verse 4, you know, he makes his ministers flames of fire. So you'll be like the flame of fire, and the enemy will become like wax. I've never seen where wax determined, you know, the state of fire. It's fire that determines the state of wax. I've never seen where smoke determined the direction of the wind. It's the wind that determined the direction the smoke went. It's time to arise at that wind that God has made you. It's time to arise as that fire that God has made you. So that even when you have counterfeit, you know, people, human beings, uh, you know, shakers and movers, uh, you, when the original comes, you see the difference. You know, normally when you have anything fake, when the original comes, the fake actually is seen. That's why I use this very, you know, uh, favorite statement of mine or expression of mine, that if you see a crooked stick, stop arguing about uh, it is uh, crooked. No, it's straight. It is crooked. You know, just bring a straight stick. Put it next to the crooked one. End of argument. That could extend to many leadership qualities as well, by the way. <laughs> Viewers, I don't know if I'm the only one excited. You can see that even Doctor is excited himself. <laughs> um, I'm, like, I'm very excited about this topic that I'm about to introduce. Yes. The continental free trade area. Well, I believe you're talking about the African continental free trade yes. area because you have also the Asian continental free trade area. Can I just read trade the, area the, and the, all the, that? the listeners who understand? All so page 42 of the prophetic, uh, prophecy directives, it says, this whole thing about African continental free trade area would only succeed when sons get into place. That is what Lord, God told me. me. That is what God told me. Twice, out of out of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Yeah. Two things. It means sons are not in place. Because actually, it's not everyone that says he or she is a child of God that is a son. I mean, you have maybe five basic words that most people know about in Greek that has to refer to, you know, brepos, uh, nepios, you know, padia, technon, and then heos. Now, heos is where you're talking of a mature son. You know, so you can have infants, you can have little children, you can have children, and you can have, you know, uh, descendants that, you know, you could call sons, but they're not at the level of maturity. And for Years, they have to be people that have maturity of spiritual experience, maturity of character, maturity of disposition, and they are people that happen to also take responsibility for themselves, for their families and communities, for their cities and nations, and for their continent and the world, and probably even the universe. Those are sons. So when you know you see, for example, taking responsibility for your continent, God saying the whole thing about the African continental free trade area will only succeed when sons get, get into place. That is what God told me. That's what he told me. Now, what we're saying in essence is, if we don't get into place, anything could distract us. Anything could actually 
upset the whole arrangement. For example, initially, it was supposed to, for the Secretariat, it was supposed to have taken off, you know, in February this year. Now, it was postponed <clears throat> till March, then COVID-19. And now, what has happened? You know, everybody is trying to ensure, first of all, safety first, you know, safety first, uh, controlling the virus first, and all that. Now, we need to make sure that the sons are in place. If I were in your shoes, as a leader of an African country, especially as those who are in charge of the African continental free trade area, whether at the level of the African Union, AU, or the various nations that are some of the kingpins for this whole thing taking off the way it should be, then this is the time to actually ensure that we hit the ground running by the time we are out of the lockdown, that we would have seized this opportunity to meet and make sure certain things are in place. I don't have to tell you how to meet and ensuring also that you don't do everything you know, too open for some people to end up just immediately thinking of ways to counter it even before you outdoor whatever it is that you're planning. Since we started from even the, uh, the uh, previous episode, the, the part one, yeah. I hear a lot of responsibility, 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 responsibility. And correct me if I'm wrong, and I also ask a question about why would a boom decade start with COVID-19? Mm. And you said, because God is looking for science. Now, does that mean that God creates a situation to see how many would trust him and even take charge of a situation that all men have said is Aha. I think you're finally getting there. Because what God is actually looking for is those who will take responsibility. Then he can covenant with them beyond the present. For example, when it came to somebody, somebody like Phinehas, when everybody will say, oh, 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 look at this guy. He's just going to sleep with a woman right in front of everybody. He's not afraid when even we're trying to repent for, you know, intermarriages with unbelievers and all of that. Finney has said, what are you people talking about? He went right into the tent and thrust both the man and the woman through with a spear. And God said, because of what you've done, I now give you a covenant of priesthood in your lineage forever. See, at the end of the day, when you take responsibility, God is ready to now trust you with more. Maybe I better repeat, he that is faithful in little will be trusted with much. What does that mean? Responsibility. Responds with the ability that God has given you to the resources and opportunities that you see is what we call responsibility. I told you he's a man full of... A lot of quotes that will guide your life. Say that again, res responsibility. Your response to the ability that God has given you, with that ability to the opportunities you see and the challenges that are presented before you, because every challenge is an opportunity for your ability to shine. See, you will not shine as light until there is darkness, because nobody needs light when everywhere is bright. You need light when there is darkness. So it's in crisis moment that the responsibility. The separation. Yeah, moment. because, you know, then the crisis, you know, crisis, you know, separation, you know, the judgment, you know, where he separates the good from the bad, you know, those who are sons, the men from babies and children. You know, this is the time. So the more you show the ability God has given you, by now responding to the opportunity the crisis is presenting. Listeners around the world, <laughs> this is very exciting. That's when God will yeah, actually begin yeah. to say, okay, okay. And uh, angel so-and-so, give, give him more. Give, bring, bring, bring that one there. There is somebody here we should bring more. Give him that also. Add this one to him. Okay, you know, where are those other angels that were supposed to be helping with this other aspect of this business? Now go to that particular place right now and help. And that's what normally happens. That's why even when you're supposed to be rising and somebody wants to put you down, there are craftsmen, angels, according to Zechariah okay. chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, that will go to free those horns that are trying to keep you from rising. 
Listeners, all the plans that God has given to you that you feel COVID-19 or coronavirus has denied you, please, I'm encouraging you to go back to them. This is the time to spend more time with those things because God is speaking clearly. Sir, eight streams of income, <laughs> COVID-19. Yes. God said that, you know, this is the time we must have eight streams of income. In fact, I believe you're referring to page 44. Yes. 44. This is a season of abundance. You know, uh, thank God for people who have houses to live in, you know, cars and all that. You know, we're going past that. It is time for you. God is not saying don't have a house, don't have cars, don't have... No, no, no. He is saying now it's time for you to have minimum of eight streams of income so that you will rather help nations. It's time for you to stop thinking of feeding your family. I'm just making sure I have food on the table for our family. Uh, 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 that's not for sons. That's for children. Children are the ones who are asking for bread. Bread is meant for daily you know, eating. But when you're a son, you ask for seed that can be stored for years for the purpose of, you know, sowing for much more harvest so you can feed the nation. So it's time for you to feed nations. It's time for you to stop thinking of feeding that little family, that little community, and begin to think of nations, not just one nation. Because he said, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, you are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me and I'll give you the nations, plural not a nation, nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Uh, it's time for us to come to the place of the eight streams of income, at least, you see, at least. And he says, God is not expecting any of you to end 2022 without at least eight streams of income. Ask God and he will show you exactly what but you're you supposed to do. you see that God is interesting because he adds a caveat to to that, yes. to say, even for the issues of income, because yes. someone might say that I've been trained as a lawyer, I've been trained as a, uh, as a carpenter. Yeah. How do I manage eight streams of income in different divisions? But in page uh, 45, he's talking about versatile skills. Yes. Required. Yes. So you are the one who <laughs> heard from God. Now, what God is saying, in essence, is that you need to now go and study acquire additional skills in any area you believe God wants you to have another stream of income. Even as a lawyer, there will be many areas, you know, platforms for expressing what God has given you as a lawyer. So you need the necessary skills to now be able to express whatever God wants you to express, even if it has to do with law in those other areas. So there's work in the kingdom of God. Yeah, you need to go and study. You, you have to up your game. You need to go a notch higher than you have been, improve upon yourself. So you are versatile in your field because God is about to do things that will be at dizzying speeds, making you to wonder what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. God will say, hey, I am the one. I'm taking you so fast that people will not even realize when you moved. And then, when did he get there? I will be said, well, that was the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. So, you know, you have to be on top of your game. This is the time to ensure that everything is really what it should be. Because, you know, God has surprises for you, but you must become also a surprise to the rest of creation unto the world. Because the whole creation has been waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Because they were waiting to be brought into the glorious liberty of sonship, according to verse 21 of that same Romans chapter 8. So this is the time, actually, that God wants to express himself in business. By the way, the word business actually comes from the Hebrew word melaka, which means deputyship, to deputize for God. So it's like you are now acting on behalf of the original CEO, your deputy CEO, deputizing for him. How about that? I mean, imagine, do you think God will want to fail in business? So the more you deputize for him, the more he will make you more successful because it's about him. Remember how we started? That he gives you the power to make wealth 
that he might establish his covenant in the earth. So it's about his covenant. It's about his reputation. It's about his integrity. God wants to defend his cause over your life. He's taking your life, his inheritance in and through you. And God will not be denied that. And I am sure you are about to cooperate with God. So you end up with the best that the world has ever seen. And you will become that best. I am the best. You are the best. We are the best that God has. That's why we were the ones preserved out of six billion possible human beings each time there was a shot into our mother's egg. It was just us who made it out of six billion possible human beings, out of the six billion spermatozoa in the pool of sperms. God made sure that you were the one who made it because he has so much confidence in you. So let's talk about taxation a bit. Yes. Uh, I personally have had issues with taxation, not the pain of it, yeah. but the fact that I don't think it is, it is adequate enough to sustain any economy. I mean, you are, you are more versatile in that area than I am because you are a lecturer in economics. Mm. But I see also God saying something about that in page 44, mm. where he's talking about there will be new forms of raising government revenue where it is not just the same old taxation practice. Thank you. God is about to bring that into expression. It will be very exciting to know what God was talking about here. You know, a lot of times what we are doing is we are taxing and taxing more and more the people who are already paying. As against, you know, widening not just tax net, but the tax base. And I'll explain that. If I can actually, you know, give incentives to people who are, you know, up and coming because 50 to 60 percent of most economies are, you know, the people who are considered SMMEs, that is small, micro, and medium enterprises. Now, so even America, that's what is there. So what will then happen is that you need to, if possible, give more tax holidays to such people and even give them incentives. You know, help them, help them to grow. And as they grow, then you will now have more in terms of the base that you can tax. And even when you have less in terms of the amount you're collecting, but now so many people, see, if you have 30% of 100, it's only 30. And if you have 10% of 1 million, that's 100,000. Which one is better? <laughs> 30 or 100,000? 100, so if you can actually expand the base and have 1 million people that you can tax just 10% each, as against your 30% because the people have so much, you're going to end up with much, much more. And with time, in terms of employment, those, you know, one million people will be employing more people anyway. So, you know, with time, you will be encouraging those and increasing their productive capacity and all of that, and then increasing entrepreneurial skills, acquisition, development of entrepreneurs, you know. So if there is anything, you look for your redemptive gifts, redemptive endowments. Which areas do you have competitive advantage, not just comparative advantage? And then begin to encourage people in that area and you develop more entrepreneurs. The rest is history. I want us to end on a very important, I mean, exciting note for my viewers. Yeah. Because the taxing, if anything changes about taxes, I know they'll be very happy. Yeah. There's one thing that I want us to tax. God's expression in the business arena, page 45. Yeah. And God is saying that those of you who are in the marketplace, as you call yourselves, I see you as the expression of God, you said that a bit earlier, but I want you to... In every area, including the areas of business, don't be surprised when you see that God makes you see things at levels you've never seen before. You'll be able to have comprehension at the highest level, which will enable you to see real the real intent of people, and by the operation of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, you'll be able to tell people why they came, what they should be doing, where they are going next, as a businessman or woman. That is astute discernment, if I can say yes, that. Yes, yes, because at the end of the day, actually, did you know that according to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 
it's possible for you to submit your five senses to the Holy Spirit to train. Because who by reason of use have exercised their senses both to discern both good and evil. Meaning how beautiful it will be that somebody is coming to deceive you. You know, all these things people are talking about, you know, hoxies and people who come and they're just, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, hoodwinking people and they come, they're fraudsters and all that. Imagine somebody comes and he says, I've come to sit and discuss business with you. He said, did I not see you when you had a meeting on such and such a day with these number of people, five of you sat in that particular room, I see the color of the curtains blue I see this I see that and the one who was in that beard said this and that you know so uh, what really do you want to do how can I help you I mean imagine that people they will tell people that look don't go to that guy he knows exactly what he's about don't go to that lady she knows what she's about and if you don't know what's good for you go there they're going to arrest you because the person knows exactly what's going on and then imagine that you're about to you know invest somewhere and God tells you don't invest here because this is going to happen and then when nobody knows what is going to happen in five years God says put money here like one time in 1992 God said to me you know go and buy land in such and such places, not me, but I told the congregation that time, you know, in airport residential area of Accra, Ghana, and I said, those of you that can go and buy land in western region, this, that, that of Ghana, go and do that because I see oil coming. And before we knew it, of course, oil was discovered in commercial quantities by 2006. Yeah, so God had given a head start to people many, many years earlier, like 14 years earlier. If they had followed, the rest would be history. So it's possible that you can actually be a prophet in business, like Joseph was a prophet in business. By the mouth of a prophet, of, of a priest, every controversy shall be settled. Can you please? takes the opportunity to speak into the economic life of our listeners. I declare your economy healed right now Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare from today that every economy that is struggling now receives strength from God. Amen. I declare from today the weak knees and the hands that hang limp receive healing from God, receive strength right now, receive a restoration of that which God ordained for you to receive in the name of the Lord Jesus. And most importantly, I declare from today that you will have eyes that see, ears that hear, noses that smell opportunities. You will have hands that can feel and every part of your being that needs to feel the kind of area that God is going and you can feel that which God is feeling and then I also release uh, you know our hearts that comprehend what needs to be comprehended and I release right now the ability to taste and see that the Lord is good you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and once again like God said in Zechariah my cities will overflow with abundance of prosperity. Let that be your experience from today. In the name that's above all names, Jesus Christ, along with whom freely God has given us all things. In line with Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, viewers around the world. God is not limited to space, so even in your home, he can bless you. So please... As you make time to listen to us, we know that you are learning, you are being encouraged in every way, shape, or form. Thank you for your time, thank you for your attention, and thank you for your prayers, most importantly. The Lord richly bless you. We'll be coming your way again with times and seasons. God bless you. See you. Thank you very much for your attention. Like we said, the privilege of your time and your attention and the fellowship on this journey. Bless you. Bless you, sir.